site investigation process of determining the layers of natural soil deposit that will underlie a proposed structure and their physical properties is generally referred to as site investigation process of soil investigation program selection of type and the type of foundation suitable for given structure evaluation of the load bearing capacity of the foundation estimation of probable settlement of the structure determination of potential foundation problems for example expansive soil collapsible soil sanitary landfills and so on establishment of groundwater table prediction of lateral pressure for structures like retaining walls sheet piles bulkheads and breast cuts exploration program the purpose of exploration program is to determine within the practical limits the stratification and engineering properties of the soils underlying the site the principal properties of the interest and which will be strength deformation and hydraulic characteristics the program should be planned so that maximum amount of information can be obtained at a minimum cost steps of surface exploration program assembly all the available information and dimension column spacing type and use of structure basal requirement and uh, any special architectural consideration of the proposed building including the basement and etc a foundation regulations in local building code should be consulted for any special requirement for bridges the soil engineer should have access to the type and span length as well as a pier loading this information will indicate any settlement limitations and can be used to estimate foundation loads recognizance of the area this may be in the form of field trip to the site which can reveal form information on the type and behavior of adjacent structures such as cracks noticeable sacks and probably sticking doors and windows the type of local existing structure may influence to considerable extent the exploration program and best foundation type for proposed adjacent structures and the nearby wells to know the water groundwater depths a preliminary investigation in this phase a few borings are made or test pit is opened to establish in a general manner the stratification types of soil to be expected and possibly the location of the groundwater table one or more borings should be taken to rock or competent strata and if the initial borings indicate upper soil is loose or highly incompressible this amount of exploration is usually to the extent of site investigation for small structures a detailed site investigation where the preliminary site investigation has established the feasibility of the project a more detailed exploration program is undertaken the preliminary borings and data are used as basis for locating additional borings which should be confirmatory in nature and determining the additional samples are required soil borings or depth of investigation see there is a trial pit 1.1 to 2 meter width and 2 to 4 meter depth that is in clay soils or whatever it may be and there is a borehole drill borehole rigs are there or there are certain the boring tools which are hand tools are um, post hole auger and helical auger which shows auger boring it can go up to certain depths and there are power drills which is by winch they can go into some 10 to 20 meters depth and like that the figure is self explanatory for wash boring the water goes there and the the water naturally removes the soil and with a pressure and it comes into the tub and slowly the the soil is settled there 
so whatever it is in the tub the layers which are formed they will be taken into consideration the information is recorded like this soil description depth of boring whatever it is there what is the where is the groundwater table and soil sample type which type of soil sample you are taking and n value if it is spt n value and what is the water content in this and any comments which is llpl in laboratory test if you do those things are also taken and recorded soil sampling two types of samples are there one is disturbed and another one is undisturbed soil sample the most important engineering properties required for foundation design are strength compressibility and permeability reasonably good estimates of these properties for cohesive soils can be made by laboratory test undisturbed soil sample which can be obtained with a moderate difficulty it is nearby nearly impossible to obtain a truly undisturbed soil sample so in general use the term undisturbed means sample where some precautions have been taken to minimize the disturbance in the original stu structure remolding effects in the context the disturbed samples are and the samples are taken and brought to the laboratory and they are <coughs> remolded disturbed versus undisturbed soils here is the area ratio this is the sampling tube if the soil goes into that and thicker the wall greater be the disturbance and out diameter minus inner diameter by inner diameter square into 100 it should not be greater than 10 percent or it should be less than 10 percent then it is called called as a disturbed undisturbed good soil sample groundwater table groundwater conditions and the potential for groundwater seepage are fundamental factors in virtually all geotechnical analysis and design studies accordingly the evaluation of groundwater condition is a basic element of almost all geotechnical investigations program. Groundwater investigations are of two types as follows. Determination of groundwater levels and measurement of permeability of the subsurface material. The following are the major field tests for determining the soil strength standard penetration test cone penetration test and electrical resistivity method these are included in gate course standard penetration test corrections are normally applied to the spt blow count to account for differences in energy imparted during the test hammer efficiency and the stress level at the test depth the following equation is used for confidence for testing factors this is standard penetration test equipment and the below the ground level it is shown as a, a tube which which penetrates into the soil and there is a hammer a six number is given that is in a hammer that hammer drops onto the tube and the tube penetrates into the ground and number of blows taken by the tube to penetrate into one foot uh, is taken as number of blows is counted and it is reported for this n value n corrected is equal to n actual by 50 by 1.42 sigma plus 10 or n c n corrected is equal to 15 plus half into n minus 15 
if the blows are more than 50. And these two corrections are one is dilatancy correction and one is overburden correction. It is dilatancy correction. Both have been done to the n value and that corrected n value is taken for. Then a bore log chart is prepared. That is top soil, see that and the sand whatever it may be the description sandy class as well as water table is also noted and depth is also noted at, at what depths the soil has changed or like that and what depth the test has been conducted and depending on the depth SPT n value is given and the sample which is collected the QU is unconfined compressor stem is found and it is reported in the another column and the rest is gamma is calculated and that is for naturally to for the uncorrected values it is used. Depend on the depth, the n corrected value and the n value can be plotted like this. Once if it is plotted, then the n design value has to be found out. For that, weighted average method can be used. n design is equal to the n value of that at that point and the density of that plus bulk density or dry density, whatever, take uniformly and plus uh, n value at that another point and that uh, so different depths, different densities are there, all added and divided by all densities if you do, you will get a n value which can you can use it for design. And here tanks formula is given n square is the n design one third is coefficient and b is the breadth of the foundation rw is the water table and plus 3 plus 100 and n minus n square depth of foundation and r dash is the water table is the cone penetration test the cone resistance is QC and tip resistance is QT and it is given and sleeve friction FS is given and frictional ratio is FS by QC is into 100% and cone is 10 cm square cross section and the typical is typically the FR will be for granular it is 0 to the and for coarser soils it is 0 to 5 and 5 to 10 percent like that. Cone penetration test results are drafted like this. Tip resistance, tip is the end of that. So tip resistance is recorded like that. Frictional ratio that is a sleeve and frictional ratio is like this and poor water pressure if anything is there that water pressure below that water pressure is a water table it is it is also measured how the water table and uf volts are there and soil type is given and the rest of the things are making it average and this is the it gives you cone resistance cone penetration resist test results Cone penetration test results are correlations are given in place uh, Cu is unconfined compression string is equal to Cu is equal to Qc minus sigma V0 and by NK cone factor is 15 to 20 varies with cone in sand set E is equal to 2.5 to 3.5 Qc Youngs, for Youngs normally consolidated Sand. Geophysical resistivity techniques are based on the response of the earth 
to the flow of electrical current. In these methods, an electrical current is passed through the ground and two potential electrodes allow us to record the resultant potential difference between them, giving us a way to the measure the electrical impedance of the subsurface material. The apparent resistivity is then function of the measured impedance or ratio of potential to the current. In the shallow surface, the presence of water controls much of the conductivity variation. Measurement of resistivity that is inverse of conductivity and in general a measure of water saturation and connectivity of pore space. This is because water has a low resistivity and the electric current will flow the path of least resistance, increasing saturation, increasing salinity of the underground water, increasing porosity of the rock and increasing number of fractures all tend to decrease the measured resistivity. Increasing compaction of soils or rock units will expel water and effectively increase resistivity. The photo shows the resistivity surveying investigation various electrical resistance by causing an electrical current to flow through subsurface using wires connected to the ground. Rest to one by conductivity. But what exactly is the resistivity? A military electrode resistivity survey, distance and all a close up of an electrode, etc., is given in the figure. Resistance and resistor. Resistance is uh, relevant only to the particular measurement circuit unit in homes. Resistivity is an intrinsic property of all physical material ohm meters and Apparent resistivity is the resistivity estimated based on assuming half space geometry units, ohm meter, etc. In resistive sounding or depth profiling, the center point of the setup is stationary, whereas the spacing of the electrodes is varied as shown in the figure. And preliminary indications of subsurface conditions may be obtained by plotting the apparent resistivity as a function of electrode spacing. The resultant diagram shows more or less pronounced break or a change in the curvature when the electrode spacing reaches the value equal to the depth of a deposit. With this a resistivity materially different from that of the overlying strata. Limitations this method is capable of detecting only the strata of different resistivity. The results are influenced by surface irregularities, wetness of the strata, and the electrolyte concentration of the groundwater. Interpretation becomes difficult when the resistivity at the interface of different strata changes gradually. Investigators must be expert, but this electrical method is extremely useful for the determination of average conditions of different structure up to a depth nearly 30 meters. Possible applications of resistive surveying, surface layer, 100 ohm, ohms, groundwater exploration, clay, 60 ohms meter, and territory of sand, and 300 ohms meter, it is an aquifer and clay like that you can types of rocks and residuity igneous rocks highest resistivity sedimentary rocks tend to be the most conductive due to their high fluid content metamorphic rocks have intermediate but overlapping resistivity age of the rock is only important for the resistivity for example Young volcanic rock 10 to 200 ohm meter and old volcanic rock 100 to 2000 ohm meters. The resistivity method is used in the study of horizontal and vertical discontinuities in the electrical property of the ground. Electrical resistance changes with the depth and soil was upper limit of the conductivity sensitivity. The variation in current density near the earth surface will be reflected 
in changes in potential difference and will result in change in the apparent resistivity.